and the soup is ever I drink. Oh, but they all say that that is a compliment to the first wife. I should not You soon let them see that if one woman was a fool, you still have the pick of the basket to choose from. I did, I did. But still, you wondered who he was. I suspected everyone. Even my pals. I wanted to jump at the throat and say, you! You had been so admirable to me that you were sure that I would choose another of the same. I thought, it can be money. The first thing works. Some dolly things. You must have had something wonderful about you, but you would be willing to leave all that you had with me. Or how? And it can't have been going on long. I would have noticed a change in you. Would you? I knew you so well. Oh, you amazing man. Say, so, tell me, who was he accurate? You are determined to know. Give your word. You promised. Then I'm sorry I promised, Harry. For there is no one. No one at all. If you think you can play with me. I told you you wouldn't like it, but it's true. That's unbelievable. I suppose it is, but it's true. That in itself gives it the lie. Oh, that was intentional. You see, I could see that if the truth were known, you might have difficulty in getting your freedom. And as I was getting mine, it seemed fair that you should have yours also. So I wrote my goodbyes in words that could be taken to mean what you thought they meant, Harry. And I know the law would back you in your opinion. For the law, like you, Harry, has a profound understanding of women. <laughs> I don't believe really it Perhaps that's the best way to take it. It's less unflattering than the truth. But you were the only one. You sufficed. And what mad impulse made you do? There's no impulse. I have thought it out for a year. Uh, a year? Well, what would you think I hadn't been a, a good husband to you? You were a good husband. According to your notes, I think so. A moral man and chatty and quite the philanthropist. A woman envied you. How you loved me to be envied. I swallowed you luxury. And that was it. What? Well, have you beamed at me when I sat at the head of our fat dinners in my fat jewellery, surrounded by our fat friends? We weren't so fat. Only those that were so thin. Have you ever noticed, Harry, that many jewels make women either incredibly fat or incredibly thin? No. <laughs> we, had, we had all the best society of the day. I mean, and it wasn't just businessmen. We had uh, poets and painters and uh, politicians. Only the glorious, dazzling successes. Oh, the fat talk while we ate too much about who was making a hit and who was slipping back and how much the new house cost, and the new car, and who was to be the new knight. Who was getting on better than I, and consequently you. Consequently me? Oh, Harry, you and your sublime religion. My religion? I would not want to talk about my religion. Who, Harry, you don't know what your religion is, was, or will be till the day of your expensive funeral. One's religion is whatever one is most interested in. And yours is success. Ambition. The last infirmity of noble minds. Noble minds? You're not saying you left me because of my success. Yes, that was it. I couldn't stand it. If only you had had a failure now and again, and this mad passion of craving. I had to be done with it and be amongst people who had not got on. Oh, there are plenty of them. <laughs> no, there are none in our set. The minute they went out of sight, they rolled down the hill. I tell you, I'm worth a quarter of a million. I'll tell you what you're worth to me. Twelve pounds. For I made up my mind that I could launch myself on the world alone if I could prove my mettle by earning twelve pounds. And as soon as I learned it, I left. That's your worth to a woman, Harry. If she can't make it, she has to stick to you. You valued me at more than that when you married me. Yes, but I didn't know you then. Oh, Harry, if only you had been a man. A man? What do you, what do you mean, a man? Haven't you heard of them? Oh, they are something fine. And every woman is loath to admit to herself that her husband is not one. When 
she marries, even though she has been a very trivial person, there is in her some vague stirring towards a noble life. And she knows her chance lies in him. If there is something good in him, it finds what is good in her, and they join forces against the base of hearts. So I didn't give you up willingly, Harry. Oh, I brought all sorts of reason to explain you. Now, your hardness, I said, was a fine want of mawkishness. Your coarseness, I said it goes with strength. And your contempt for the weak, I called it virility. And your lack of noble ideas was clear sightedness. And your ignoble views <coughs> on women, I tried to think them funny. Oh, Harry, I clung to you to save myself. But I had to let you go in the end. You have the one quality, success. You have it so strong, it's bothered all the others. How did you add that to our plans? <laughs> I learned that. I hired it, taught myself, got some work through a friend, and with my first 12 pounds, I paid for my machine. And then I considered I was free to go. <coughs> All this going on in my house, while you were living in the lap of luxury. Yes. My God, you were determined. Oh, by God, I was. Oh, you must have hated me. Not a bit. Well, once I saw there was a way out. But from that moment on, you only used me. You see, I realized that you just couldn't help yourself. Success is a fatal gift. Thank you. And some of your friends knew it too. Some of your most successful friends looked very sad at times, as if they might have come to something if they hadn't got on. <laughs> and the magic tree you live among now, who are they but those who have tried and failed? That's right. They try and they fail. And they always fail. Really. Always. Poor souls, I say of them. Poor souls, they say of me. That's what keeps us human. And that's why I never tire of them. I tell you, kid, we want half a million to <laughs> I'm sure you will. You're getting fat. Very much. What was the name of that fat old fellow who used to fall asleep at our dinners? Um. Oh, uh, <laughs> um, you mean uh, Sir William Crackley? Sir William Crackley, Sir William Crackley. That's it. He was to me a perfect example of the grand success. He had got on so well that he was so fat. And when he sat in a chair, it was thus, as if he was holding it all in. That's what you're working for, Harry. You'll have this and the half million at the same time. Will you please leave my house? Oh, but don't let's part in anger. How do you think I look? compared to that dull inert creature that used to roll around your paddy carriages. I can't remember what you look like. I'm sure you couldn't hold the candle to the plan and lit it. But that's a picture of her, isn't it? Yes, a little wedding gown. Painted by a royal academician. Oh, a knight? Mm, yes. It is a very pretty face. Yes, it knows be a beauty everywhere. There's a merry look in her eye and character in the chin. No to the foot of which. All her life before, when that was taken, it is a spiritual face too. Oh, Harry, Harry, you brute! What? This dear noble creature, capable of becoming a wife and mother, she is the spiritless, querulous woman of no account. I saw her a few moments ago. Oh, Harry, I could have forgiven you for me because I escaped. But for this. Oh, Harry, Harry! Uh, uh, thank you. If ever there was a woman, blind of her husband, and happy in her marriage life, that woman is made of sins. I wonder. Oh, well, you needn't wonder. If I was a husband, and this is my advice to all of them, I would often quietly watch my wife to see whether or not the twelve pound look was coming into her eye. <laughs> Two boys, did you say? And both like you? What is that to you? I was just thinking that somewhere there are two pretty little girls. 
the pretty little girls who are all meant for the men that don't get on. Well, goodbye, Sir Harry. Say first that you're sorry. For what? For leaving me. You know you reject it. when I said I'd get you these ropes of pearls. Did she? I didn't notice. I, I suppose so. Suppose? Should I have a woman well enough to know that? Yes. Oh, yes. I know you well, don't I, Emma? I can read you like a book. Let's see. 